Estatut Polri. <coughs> uh, so this is another problem, uh, practice problem that can that we can find uh, for a frame case. Okay. Uh, for this particular problem, uh, the one that is in question is the uh, the load which is happening at point E. Yeah. Okay. What is the load which is happening at point E and point A? Okay. Uh, for this particular case, uh, can anyone in here help me? Whether in this case we have a two force member or not? Anyone have any idea what is? Do we have a two force member here? Matthew, what do you think? Do we have a two force member here, Matthew? Hello, Matthew. Hold on, sir. Oh, anyone? I don't think so, sir. Yeah, you don't think so. Okay. So, uh, actually, it's correct. We don't have a two force member in this particular case. Okay, and <clears throat> there are two main members CE and AC. The member AC here is multi force member. Okay, the member uh, CE here is multi force member as well. So we have two multi force members there. Okay, and one more thing. Uh, now, we are here. Mia, how can we solve for this particular problem? What things that we have to do first? Mia. Hello, Mia? Can you hear me, Mia? Hello? Oh, yeah, I start responding. Um, Omar, I guess. Omar, can you tell me how can we handle this particular problem? How can we solve this particular problem? Uh, <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? <laughs> well, uh... I'm I'm not sure that I get it, sir. <laughs> um, but but can, can can you imagine this particular problem? We have to multi force member A, C, and C, E, and after that there is a pulley system, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is connected to those two members. Yes. Okay. You can mm -hmm. see right. This is a pulley. At mm -hmm. C we have a pulley here. At C we have a pulley here. Okay. And there is a weight. A W here. Mm -hmm. So all the all the results supposed to be in W and A. Mm -hmm. So later, so later the results will be in W and in A. Oh. Like okay, okay, okay. So you don't have to be confused because uh, uh, when we when we put it this way, it means that uh. <coughs> The length is in A. Mm -hmm. Beside that, the all the force is in W. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it, it will be just more or less the same if we, we put okay then A in order to make it easier for you, just put W as one thousand newton like that, or A as one meter is like that. Just mm -hmm. the same. But later the results, the results if if we have uh, the results in W and in A, it's supposed to be that way. Mm -hmm. 
okay, okay. for that one. But it's more or less the same. Like uh, we put the W equal to one thousand newton or A equal to uh, one meters like that. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. I see. I see. <clears throat> of course. Oh, so the, that's the things that confuse you, Omar. Ah. Uh... Well, or to the system. Uh, uh, what's that? So the one that the one that confuses you is the system itself, or uh, the fact that the uh, input load is in W and the uh, uh, line is in A. I think the system itself, sir. Oh, the system itself. But now, can you can you imagine the system itself? Mm. There is a rope here connected from point D. Mm -hmm. Going around the pulley B, mm -hmm. okay. Going around the pulley C until connecting to W. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's it. Mm. The rest uh, are just member AC and member CE, which is connected to a pin at point A and point E, and both are connected using pin at point C. Okay. Okay, but can you imagine that? Mm, ah, yes, yes. Okay, now for the external load, for the external load, how should we, uh, how should we replace the load which is happening because of the pulleys and the rope? Mm, uh, you mean like draw a free body diagrams? Yes, of course, we have to draw the pre body diagram, right? Yes. Okay. So, the first thing that we're supposed to draw, okay, it's, it is better for us to... Uh, the quite complicated one is the one at point C, right? Mm, okay. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, the first thing that you're supposed to draw is the free body diagram uh, to move the force which is happening at the pulley, mm -hmm. okay, the, to move the force which is happening at the pulley to the, uh, to the joint, to the point, uh, to the, uh, to the pin. So for example, we have this, uh, sorry. We have this particular pulley, pulley B, okay. At pulley B, there is force going down like this and force going to the right like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's T, right? At both is supposed to be T. Yes. Or we, we, we can call it as T1, eh, sorry, T1 and T2 like that. And beside that, at point B, what is happening there at point B? Mm. At point B. Uh... There is a joint there, right? There, there, uh, ah, there's yeah. a pin there, right? Yes. Pin is supposed to be give a reaction force, right? What kind of uh, reaction force is we supposed to find there? Reaction, uh, pin. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it like uh compression or tension, sir? No, not compression uh. or tension, but it's more to the uh ah. reaction at at pin. Reaction at pin is supposed to be dx and dy, right, Omar? Ah, yes, yes. This is py. Oh, I see. Hmm. This is px. That's the free body diagram for the first pulley. Okay. I, I will not solve for that first, but I want to draw the second free body diagram for the second pulley. Okay. If this is our second pulley, then what we have there in the second pulley? Uh, C, pulley at C. E. Hmm? Uh, we have the weight. The weight going down. The weight going down. The T. T T one. Oh T. Okay, I use okay. In case don't use T one here, but so T one and T three. So we have T one oh. here. Okay. Yeah. What else? And uh, <coughs> uh, the force of AC. AC. You mean? What do you uh, mean by AC? Wait, wait, wait. Ah, oh, no, no. Ah, uh, C. CX and CY. Oh, correct. CX and CY. That's simple. Okay. <laughs> this is our CX. This is our CY. So 
that's the thing that we're supposed to do first. We have to solve for the uh, pulley. We have to solve that. This is the same for a fast system as well. If you have a fast system and you have a pulley there, the first thing for you to solve is the pulley first. In mm -hmm. order to find out mm -hmm. okay. for the uh, uh, external forces which is happening at the pin. Mm. Okay. Because the external forces which is happening at the pin is not T3, T1, T2, or W. But the one that is happening there is actually CY, CX, PX, PY. Correct, right? What? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So we have to solve for that first. Okay, now uh, try to solve for uh, the pulley on the right. So I assume uh, I, I, I name it as the first pulley. How many equation that we have, Omar? Uh, uh, we have... Because this is just the same as the practice for the truss, because the system is quite close to the truss, even though all the members are multi-force members. Okay? This part is quite close to the truss. So, mm -hmm. what equation that we have? Uh, three? Yeah, three equation. Okay. Uh, which one that you want to use first? Mm, maybe... Uh... Uh, sigma fx first. Sigma fx first. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. So using sigma fx equal to zero. Uh, going right or going down? Is it going right or going left positive? Uh, going right. Going right. Right plus positive. Cx. Yeah. Then what we have? Yeah. Um, minus t one. Mm -hmm. Uh, equals zero. zero. So our CX will be equal to T1, right? Yes. Then what else do you want to use? Uh, uh, sigma FY equal to zero. Mm -hmm. What we have there? Uh, going up or going down first? Uh, going up or going down? Going, um, going up, going up. Okay, CY? CY minus the weight. Okay, W equal to zero. Uh, equals to zero. Yep, CY equal to W. Yeah. W. So this is this is the first thing that we get first. Yes. Then after that, and then after that, a uh, moment, a sigma okay. moment equal to zero. At point one. Uh, a uh, sigma moment at C equal to zero. <laughs> okay, you want clockwise or counterclockwise first? Ah, uh, wait. <laughs> um, wait. Mm, wait. <laughs> Anything is okay. Uh, clockwise, clockwise. Yeah, because it's just a positive and negative. Anything is okay. Likewise, in that case, hmm. what you have there? Uh, T1. Hmm? Okay. Hey, wait, wait. Likewise, positive. Oh, Remember, clockwise, positive. Likewise is like this. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, w, uh, w. Hmm? W multiplied by? Uh, multiply by, wait, uh, A. A, the correct, because the A, yeah. Uh, because the R is equal to A, then? Mm, uh, minus uh, T1 multiplied by A. Then? Uh, uh, equals to zero. What you got? Eh? What you have? Eh? Uh, what I have is, wait, uh, W equal, uh, T1 A, equal to W. w. Uh, that's what you will get. Mm. Okay, so... We have the value of CY, we have the value of CX, we have the value of T1. CX here is equal to T, T1, which mm. is equal to W, right? From the yes. at the bottom. So CX will be equal to W as well. Mm. <coughs> okay, now we solve for the second, mm. Mm. for the second pool. <coughs> Okay, uh, the first thing that we have to have here, actually this one is not supposed to be T1 and T1. Yeah, actually you are correct, it's supposed to be T1, right? Because it's actually uh, belongs to the same group, right? So T1, this is T2, yes, you are correct, T1. T1 here is equal to W, we know it already. Yes. Okay, the rest, we don't know it yet. Mm. We have three unknowns, equation. Mm. Okay, I'll try to make it, fast okay using sigma fx equal to zero we will be able to get this directly uh going right uh, going left positive dx minus 
T1 equal to 0. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, T1 here is equal to W. So the X will be equal to W. Will be equal, sorry. Will be equal to T1, will be equal to W. That's from sigma F X equal to 0. Then from uh, sigma moment at T equal to 0. Okay. Now we'll have T1 multiplied by A minus T2 multiplied by A equal to 0. What I will get is T1 equal to T2 equal to uh, W. So T2 will be equal to W. Okay. T here is equal to W. Then using sigma Fy equal to 0. Okay. What I will get is Py minus T2 equal to 0. What I will get is Py equal to T2 equal to W. So Py will be equal to W. T2 will be equal to W. Px will be equal to W. Okay, so we got all the things that we have. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. Now, the next thing that we're supposed to do is what? Uh, solve at uh, the point A and point E. Yeah, how can we solve for that? Uh, <laughs> uh, by, by using the equation for CX no, and no, no, Y. We don't have the equation yet because we haven't drawn the Q-body diagram yet. Uh, you, you will not have any equation if you don't have the free body diagram. So uh, uh, three equation actually represent one free body diagram. You get it? Oh, okay, okay. One free body diagram uh, is actually, uh, we will have an equation with one free body diagram. That's why when I draw the first free body diagram here, I have three equation. Uh... This is the first prevariant. This is the second prevariant. I have three equation. Actually, uh -huh. it comes up from there. So you so, have to draw the prevariant diagram. Ah, uh, so so that's why you solve for uh the 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 the, the point B and C first because yep. it make it easier for a uh, drawing the next step, diagram. Yes, correct. Um, because uh, later I need the input at point B and point C in order to draw for uh. Uh, the free body diagram A, uh, A, C, my free body diagram for the member A, C, and C, E, right? Mm, yes. Mm. Mm. Okay? Do you get it? I get it, sir. Mm. Okay. Now, let's draw one by one of free body diagram. Okay? Uh, the first thing that you want to draw is the whole free body diagram, the whole free body diagram, mm -hmm. but with the new load. Okay, the whole free body diagram is supposed to be like this, right? Mm -hmm. This is member AC, then CE, This is member CE. Here we have AX, X. AY, correct? Right? Yes. Here we have EX, EY. Right. What else do we have from uh, the external world that we have just now? BX and BY. BX and BY. So, but we don't have to put it as BX and BY anymore. We uh. have to put it. S W, right? W. Ah, I see. Going to because it's become external load right now. The mm. X is going to the uh here, the X is going to the left, the mm. Y is going to the right. But at mm. point B, how are we supposed to draw it? Mm. Remember it, it is action and reaction on us. Oh, so like with, with an angle? Not any angle. So uh, uh here in this particular free body diagram. Okay, the top left free bit diagram. Mm -hmm. Px and py here, uh, P Px and py there is actually the force which is given by the uh, member AC to mm -hmm. the pulley. Yes. But the one that we have to draw in our free body diagram here 
uh, this one. Okay, at this particular point, it's actually the other way around. The the forces which is given by the pulley mm -hmm. to the member because it's actually action and reaction. So what do you think? If uh, action and reaction is basically it's just the opposite direction. Oh, so so like uh, the opposite direction to be X and BY? Yep. The opposite uh, direction of this particular direction. Because this one is actually from the member to the pulley. But the one that we have to draw here is from the pulley to the member. You mm, get it? Okay, okay. Okay. So here, Px is supposed to be going to the right. And the value is equal to W. And then the y here is going up. So here the y is supposed to be going down. Down. And the value is W. W as well. Okay. How about at point C? At point C, wait, 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 wait. C Y is going up, C X is going to the right. Uh so uh, in the free body diagram, C Y it's supposed to be going down and CX is supposed to be going left. Yeah, correct. And the value is W. W. Something like that. Do you get it? Yes, sir. So now we replace all the external load. Uh, not yet. I forgot about something. How about T here? T there is supposed to be having a T2, right? Mm, uh, I'm sorry, sir? At point D. At point, At point D, ah, there is yes. a hook, uh, right? Yes. And uh, the value is supposed to be the same as T2, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, but where is the direction there at point D? Uh, going up, sir. Going up. Hey, the, the radius is A. Yep. So it's about B here. Going up, W, right? Yes. W. Ah. Uh, Okay, and if we need the dimension from here to here, it's 4a, from here to here, it's another 4a. Okay, from here to, uh, sorry, from this to this, is actually the horizontal is a. Mm -hmm. Why is a? Because the radius there is a, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Uh... 4a. Or a that's it actually, right? Mm -hmm. This is the whole free body diagram, but with the yeah. complete uh, with the complete uh, external forces. Mm -hmm. Okay, Omar? Yes, this sir. is our new free body diagram. But can you solve this directly, Omar? Mm -hmm. Try to when I ask when I ask you whether you can solve it or not. The things that you should do is just to check actually whether the number of unknowns and the number of uh, equations that we have match. Mm. What do you think about this? How many how many unknowns that we have? Four. What others? Uh, AX, AY, uh, EX, and EY. Yep, correct. This is our unknowns. AX. Ay, ex, uy. How many equations that we have? Mm, we have three equations. Only three, because this is one free body diagram, right? Yes. This is our third free body diagram. Mm. We only have three equations there for this one particular free body diagram, which is sigma f x equal to zero, mm -hmm. sigma f x. 3 equal to 0, sigma f y 3 equal to 0, sigma moment 3 equal to 0. 3 there represents the free body diagram. Correct, right? Uh, yes, so sir. can we solve for this one? Mm, no, sir. No, we cannot. <coughs> so what we're supposed to do, Omar, in order for us to solve this? Uh, using the section method? We can, we cannot do section method for uh, frame. No, no, no. Okay. The method for the frame is not the same for the uh, it's not the same for truss. Truss, yes, you can use section method. You can use uh, join method. But for frame, we cannot use that anymore. 
uh, or frame the things that you can do. So this is for you guys, for all of you guys, right? This is most of the time we will have to solve for this kind of problem. When we take a look at the whole free body diagram, when everything is joined together, okay, the number of unknowns normally will be more than the number of equation. If it's that's the case, if that's the case, what you're supposed to do is to divide the uh, free body diagram into several free body diagram, several smaller free body diagram. How can we do that? Okay, we can separate each member. You get it, Omar? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Remember, we have a AC, right? And E a, and CE, right? We have two members there. Right? Yeah. Okay, we have two uh, multi force member, which is which we can which we can uh, separate it into two different free body diagram. Correct, right, Omar? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, sir. That's the normal method. That's the normal method in order to solve for a uh, frame or machine system we have to spread the multi-force member into several different free body diagram if the whole free body diagram cannot be solved mm, okay, okay, okay. okay you get it mm, i think i get it <laughs> now why you think you get it <laughs> it's not you think you get it you're supposed to get it completely uh... You get it or not? Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's um, supposed to be, right? So I, currently, uh, we have uh, four unknowns. We have three equations. We cannot solve it. So we have to find another method. The methods that uh, I propose and the methods that we normally can be that normally can be used to solve this kind of problem is to by to is by separating, uh, separating the, uh. Uh, the member, the multi-force member, especially, you get it, Omar. Uh, so, like we, uh, we, uh, we, we solve the equation by parts. I mean, like for a for member AC, it's another equation, and for yes. EC, it's another. Member equation. AC will have three equations. Member CE will have another three equations because because each of those we have to draw the free body diagram. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I get it. so okay. we will not we will not handle the third free body diagram anymore because we cannot solve this. Mm. What we want to do right now after this is to divide the third free body diagram into two different free body diagram. Okay. The first one is the member AC. The second one is member C. Mm. By doing so, for each free body diagram, we will get three equations. Right, right. Uh, Yes, sir. Okay, that's the whole thing. That's the normal way to, to solve for frame. So frame, when we handle multi-force member, we cannot do section. We cannot do mm -hmm. uh, join method anymore. What you can do if you uh, handle a section, uh, sorry, if you handle a multi-force member, is to draw that particular multi-force member as a separate free body diagram. Because by doing so, you will get three equations for that particular member only. Mm. Okay, okay, you get it. I get it, I get it. Yeah. So that's the thing that we normally do in the frame. The, the logic is slightly different than solving a uh, fuss like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Now let's try to draw the first free body diagram, sorry, the default free body diagram, which is member AC. Mm. So we have it like this. It like this. Okay, what force that we have there? Actually, it's just copying the, the left free body diagram, right? Uh, yes. What we, um, have? we have uh, first down and first uh, the a, the a, 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 x and a y. Okay. And then we have b x and b y, but it's uh, as weight. Okay, yeah, we don't talk about PXPY anymore. Yes. We, we handle that as an external load, which is W going to the right and W going to the, uh, going down like that, okay? So we have here W going to the right and going down. Mm. 
what we have at uh, what we have what else do we have and then at the end the right end of the member we have w to to uh, down and w to the left is it yep are you sure mm, yes okay remember yeah the double because it comes from the fully okay we treat it as external force okay mm -hmm. we treat it as external force if you just draw it like this okay it is not complete yet why because you have an include okay you have an include the effect of the force which is happening at a uh, member ce to mm. member ac that force uh, is supposed to be happening at joint c mm, okay okay remember right? there, there is a connection there like this mm. okay this is member ac this is member ew can you see my video ah uh, yes yes sir yeah this is member ac this is member c mm -hmm. okay at this part at this particular point there is a connection c right between mm. those two yes at that particular connection there must be there must be uh, action and reaction right uh, and uh, the action yes. and reaction is not yet included in this particular preberry diagram mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. do you understand mommy i understand so you supposed to include this as well c x and y yes. and this one c x and x uh, why i name it as c x n because previously we use c right mm. c x and c y for uh the pulley yes okay it's different than the reaction from the pulley the pulley there the reaction became w going to the left and w going to uh, the going down okay. but it's from the pulley to the uh to the frame mm. but now what i'm looking here is uh the joint between the joint uh the forces which is happening at the joint c uh between member ac and member ce do you get it omar ah uh, i get it i get it yeah so you have to draw this so this is our third fibri diagram okay hey, sorry ah this is our fourth preparatory diagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you mention how many how many unknowns there and how many equations there? Uh, equations three. Equations three, as usual. Sigma f x four equal to zero. Sigma f y four equal to zero, and sigma moment four equal to zero. And how many unknowns do we have? Uh, four. Four as well. Uh, yeah. AX, AY, CX and X, CX and Y, right? So yes. we still cannot solve this, right? Mm, yes. But don't be afraid because we still have the other frequency diagram. Mm. Right, right? The yes. fifth frequency yes. diagram. We have the fifth February diagram. For the fifth February diagram, it is a D member. What is this? Okay, D member CE, right? Yes. Okay, what we have in the member CE then? What external forces that we have in the member CE then? Just uh, copy from the uh, to the from the third February diagram. Uh, at the left end, we have E X and E Y. What else? And then at, I don't know if it's at the center or or. No, no it's not the center. It's oh. uh, actually uh, if you take a look at this right, it's from the horizontal distance here. It's supposed to be three a from the left, because there was a pulley there, right? Remember? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's supposed to be three a, from the left, right? Ah, oh, okay, okay. So from three A from the left, it's there is a W. Okay, this one is three A going up. W going up. 
What else? <coughs> and then at point C, hmm? at point C we have W going down, double and W going left, and C X and Y going up, and C X. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, C, X and, and reaction. Remember C X X and C X. Uh, C X and Y and C X and X. Yeah, it's supposed to be action and reaction. Ah. Uh, So C X and Y going up and C X and X going, wait, uh, going right. Action and reaction. Wait, wait. <laughs> this, this one is going to the going up and right, right? C X action. Ah uh, yes. C X action. So yes. it's supposed to be action and reaction because to add the pin there. Here, if in the fourth free body diagram, when I draw it, C X and X and C X and Y like that, this mm -hmm. actually means. The force which is given by member C, uh, member C to member A C at point C. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, but now if we take a look at the fifth freeway diagram, it's supposed to be the other way around. The force which is given by member A C to member C at point C. Mm -hmm. So it's action and reaction. So when we draw it like this, right. At the uh, fourth freeway diagram, in the fifth freeway diagram, we have to draw it the opposite. Oh, I see. X and X, mm. the same as before. Okay, remember just now when when we talk about quite long about the W is supposed to be going the opposite. It's uh, X and relation. It's always like. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Okay. It's supposed to be going now. It's X and Y. Uh, okay, okay, okay. That's mm. it, Omar. The W is not there anymore. Mm. Why the W is not there anymore? Wait. Why the W here is not there anymore? Um. Uh, because it's already wait. Because it's already included in the fourth free bed diagram. Uh, When we sum these two free bed diagram, if we sum these two free bed diagram, fourth free bed diagram and fifth free bed diagram, the result supposed to be the same as the third free bed diagram. Uh, I see. You can see, right? Yes. If we sum both, right? C X and X and C X and Y because it's action and reaction. It's supposed to be correct, correct or not? Mm, yes. Okay, W here is already included one. W here is already included one. So it will be the same as this one, correct or not? Mm, If yes, you sir. put W again, uh, W to the left and to the right again at point C in the fifth free bed diagram in this particular point, okay, mm. it will be counted double, right? Ah, yes, sir. When you sum it up, that's the thing. So you have to, you can only include it once. Mm, okay. okay. You get it. I get it, sir. So basically, when you spread the free body diagram into two like this, fourth free body diagram and fifth free body diagram, okay, fourth free body diagram and fifth free body diagram, okay, when you sum it up, it's supposed to be the same as the third free body diagram. Mm. I get it, sir. Okay. Mm. Now, from the fifth free body diagram, how many equations do we have? Uh, three. Three as well as usual. My f x uh, five equal to zero. Sigma f y five equal to zero, and sigma moment five equal to zero. And what else? Uh, sorry, not what else. What? Uh, how many uh, unknowns do we have? We have a y uh, e a x c x and y and c x and x. Okay, c x and x c x and Why? Right. How many equations there? Four. I sorry. What? How many unknowns there? Four, right? Yes. This four. One is four. Okay. Can we solve this directly? No, right? No. Yeah. But can you join these two together? If you join these two together, okay, those uh, unknowns together, from fourth free body diagram and the fifth free body diagram, how many unknowns do we have? Uh, uh, we have eight unknowns. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Take sorry. a look again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, six unknown. Six unknowns because C, X, and X is, is there in both, right? Yes. Are they in both? So we have six unknown in total. In total, we have A, X, 
a y e x e x y y c x and x c x and y c x and y and in total as well we have six questions question can we solve it yes yes we can solve it we can solve it by solving both fourth fibonacci diagram and fifth fibonacci diagram mm -hmm. that's the way to solve it <coughs> okay you get it omar i get it sir. anyone here having any questions about this particular uh, frame case if you have any question please let me know okay because we still have five minutes five more minutes where does the w yes. on the uh ec i think it's the ec uh member from yeah I'm a bit which, one, w which one you mean this one uh, uh yes sir. oh that one oh uh you are confused why it suddenly come up there this one Okay, and now take a look at this. At point D there, okay, at point D, there is a rope, mm -hmm. right, joining at point D? Yes. Okay, if the rope is pulled by W oh, here, yeah. at this particular point, right, okay, it's pulled by W, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, I think I will just, no, no. pulled by W there. So here, the Tension is uh, W, here is the tension is W, the tension here is W. The tension here, we found it as W as well. Uh, yes, sir. Remember from T2, T2 we yeah. got it as W. Eh? So yes. at point D, like it or not, there will be a, a pull from the, uh, from the rope uh, uh, in the shape of W. Eh? Uh, yes, sir. So at point D there, it, it will be a force going up W because of the tension from the rope. Yes. yes. It's okay. Good now, sir. Hmm. So uh, is it clear now? Alan? Yes. Very hmm. to ask about another thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that? How do you, the, the direction of the BX and CX, how do you determine it? BX and CX. Yes. BX and CX. Okay, this one, right? <clears throat> y is going to the right and going down. Yes. When we take a look at the uh, second Fibonacci diagram, Px is going to the left, Py is going to going up, right? And yes. the value is positive, right? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. This one, Px and By here. I yes. already assumed that the uh, the direction is going left and going up. Yes, sir. Actually, you can assume the direction is the opposite as well. Going to the right and going down. It's oh. up to you. But you can assume that. But if you assume it going right and going down, later your results will not be positive. Like my calculation here, Px is positive W, Py is positive W. Oh, so later your results will be negative. So actually, you can assume anything that you want. when. Uh, we don't know the force value yet, Aaron. So you can assume it going to the left or going to the right, going up or going down. It can it can be anything. It's up to you. Yes. But later, oh, yeah. so, uh, sorry. So B X and B C is determined in conjunction to the tension. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. But if you you can assume it anything that you want. You can you can assume it going up, down, left, right. It's up to you. But uh, later, if you find out that your results is negative, not positive like this, <clears throat> then your assumption is in the wrong direction. Instead of going right, it's supposed to be going left. Instead of going down, it's supposed to be going up. You get it? Uh, yes, sir. So it's up to you to, uh, to assume from the beginning. <clears throat> oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. But like, like this, after, after uh, in this case, we get that W is positive. As a BX, sorry, BX is positive, positive W. PY is positive W. So in that case, it means that our assumption is correct. Right, Aaron? Mm -hmm. Going left and going up. But when we throw the free body diagram here, 
it become right and down instead of left and up. It's the action reaction. Oh, yes. Because in the pulley, we draw the force which is given by member AC to the pulley. But in this particular free body diagram, third free body diagram, we draw the uh, force which is given by the pulley to the member AC. So that's why it's the opposite. You get it? Um, so the action in pulley is the reaction then? Yeah, action and reaction is always the opposite, like that. Also, so when you take a look at the pulley, the force is going in what direction? If, in, if you take a look at the, uh, the member, which is connected to the pulley, the force is supposed to be going the opposite type, direction. That's all. You can see it. Hmm. So if it's in the member, then it's the member to the pulley. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. if, sorry, if it's in the it's, if it's the force is at the member, it's supposed to be from the pulley to the member. Oh, it's from the pulley. Oh, yes. Okay. If you take a look at the force at the pulley, then it's supposed to be from the member to the pulley. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, okay. Sir, I see. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, the, the easier way to, to determine it is always the opposite direction of the other given diagram. It's, it's always like. Okay. Because it's always action and action. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good, good. Okay. I think this one uh, is quite clear enough for this particular pre uh, particular problem. Uh, uh, after this, we will continue with the discussion for the exam preparation. Okay. Uh, but uh, in this particular case. I will not discuss uh, anything, but it's more towards if you have any problem, you can ask me. Okay, if you have any problem, you can ask me. Remember that the topics is not just trust only for the exam. Okay, then I think for this one, I will try to stop the recording.